Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another gotcha video and today I'm just going to be comparing and contrasting Genshin Impact and Moon Ring Waves. What's their ups and downs? What makes each game tick, etc, etc. This is pretty similar to that Ether Gazer versus Punishing Grey Raven video. By the way, if you happen to like the video, you just leave a like and subscribe and comment too. Don't forget to leave a comment. Let's start off with comparing their gameplay since that's the most important part in any video game, the gameplay. Both Genshin Impact and Wuthering Graves are both open world games. Genshin Impact's open world is very bright and colorful while Wuthering Graves' open world is a little bit more post-apocalyptic. I would say that Genshin Impact leans towards more like the family friendly side of the audience while Wuthering Waves leans towards more of the mature side of the audience. Both of these games also have elements in their game. Genshin has seven elements. We got Pyro, Hydro, Electro, Dendro, Animo, Cryo, and Geo. Wuthering Waves has six elements. Fusion, which is fire, Glacio, which is ice, Electro, Arrow, which is wind, Spectro, which is the light element, and Havoc, which is the dark element. The combat in Genshin Impact relies on elemental reactions. There are many different elemental reactions in the game. Each elemental reaction has a different effect, but they basically deal a ton of damage to the enemy. Depending on your team composition, certain elemental reactions will get buffed. Example of a elemental reaction in Genshin is you apply Hydro on the enemy, and then you switch to another character, you apply pyro on the enemy and you basically did vaporize. These elemental reactions really make the combat diverse because there are crap tons of elemental reactions that you can cause. Because elemental reactions are very important, characters that have off field capabilities are generally more valuable since you constantly want to apply elements to an enemy. A character in Genshin Impact basically has a basic attack, elemental skill, and an elemental burst. They also have a few passive skills that can help them in battle. I would say that the combat in Genshin Impact is a pretty more relaxing combat you basically hit the elemental skill swap to another character use their elemental skill maybe use a burst every now and then and the enemy will be dead the combat gets even more casual if you have a shielding character especially Zhongli I do think Genshin has the more casual combat compared to Wuthering Waves now Wuthering Waves is combat even though they have elements there is no really elemental reactions the elements are basically just there because specific enemies are resistant or weak to other elements. Combat in Wuthering Waves is basically just going to be you parrying, dodging, and beating the shit out of the enemy until the enemy dies. Gimmick in Wuthering Waves' is combat is basically you're going to be filling up this thing called the Concerto Meter, and once that fills up, you basically get a QTE to swap to another character. Now when you swap to another character, you basically activate your character's outro skill, and the next character that comes in, you basically activate their intro skill. Each outro and intro skill can be very different depending on what characters you have. You can only have three characters at a time, but in Genshin you can have four. You're basically just going to be utilizing the outro and intro skill very often. Each character has a basic attack, a skill, and a burst, and they also have an echo. Another thing that each character has in Wuthering Waves is this thing called the Forte Circuit. Forte Circuits are basically like a character's special skill. Each one is going to be very different depending on which characters you have. Some are not that very good, some are very good. There are also certain requirements that you have to do in combat in order to activate a Forte skill. Wuthering Waves is definitely more combat oriented than Genshin Impact since you do have to dodge specific attacks. You can also parry specific attacks to give you an edge in battle. I did mention earlier that both of these games are open world games. As they're both open world games, there are quests that you can do, treasure chests to collect, a lot of other things that you can collect as well. Keep in mind that Genshin Impact has been around for five years, while Wuthering Waves has been around for only like a few months. So Genshin Impact does have like a lot more to explore compared to Wuthering Waves. Open worlds also typically have like puzzles in their open world as well. When it comes to puzzle solving, I do think Genshin Impact has just better puzzles. Each region in Genshin Impact has like a very specific gimmick that you can do that can help you solve puzzles. And I just think that they're just very creative in general. Now, Wuthering Waves does have puzzles in their open world, but I do think they're kind of not that good. And in the new region of Black Shores, there are like hardly any like puzzles to do in 
that region. So when it comes to creative puzzles, I think Genshin Impact just has much more creative puzzles than Wuthering Waves. Now when it comes to other mechanics in the open world like stamina, running, etc, etc, I do think Wuthering Waves is better. Characters in Wuthering Waves can run and climb faster compared to Genshin Impact. One of the complaints I hear about Genshin Impact is that there are specific characters that are very good in the open world, but because most of them are five-star characters, you do have to pull for those characters. But in Wuthering Waves, at least everyone kind of has like the like the same traveling method, although Shorekeeper does have a faster running speed compared to any other characters that they've gotten so far. In order to level up your characters, you do need materials in the open world, and I do think Wuthering Waves has a much better grasp on collecting items in the open world because Wuthering Waves does have this thing that basically tells you where to collect items, specific items. But in Genshin Impact, you do need a specific five-star character or not even a five-star character, but even like specific characters in general in order to pinpoint certain materials. And getting those characters can take money or just luck. Leveling up characters in Genshin Impact can be quite a pain in the ass because in order to level up specific characters, not even just characters, but weapons as well, is that sometimes you do have to wait specific days of the week in order to get those materials in these things called domains. But in Wuthering Waves, you don't have to wait a specific day of the week to level up a character or weapon. Basically, every dungeon or domain is basically available to you. All in all, I do think Wuthering Waves does have a better side grade of the open world than Genshin Impact. But if you're looking for like an actual like gacha open world that's better, I think Tower of Fantasy basically mogs both of them since Tower of Fantasy does have mounts. Not to mention it does have like a better hook shot than Wuba. Wuba's hook shot is kind of cope. Tower Fantasy just has a better hook shot. I think it's kind of weird that both Genshin and Wuba don't even have like mounts at all for an open world game. Overall, Wuthering Waves does have better open world mechanics, but I do think Genshin has just better puzzle mechanics. Genshin's open world does have a lot more things to do though, since the game has been out for five years. You can fish. If you fish, you can get one of the best weapons in the game. It's also a trading guard game that you can just play with NPCs. You can also play this with other players as well. However, I do think the trading card game is kind of copium. Genshin also has a base system that you can customize and invite characters into. So if you are into base systems, Genshin Impact does have that. The amount of time to do dailies in these games will really just depend on some various things. In Wuthering Waves, you can either do one daily quest and spend 180 of your wave plate. Genshin Impact doesn't really have dailies anymore. You can either explore the world, open up treasure chests, spend your resin, do events, or do the story instead of really doing dailies. Either way, both of these games, the dailies can take up to at least maybe like 10 minutes at best. Let's now talk about the best part about these gacha games. The gacha. Genshin Impact has three banners. You got a limited, standard, and a weapon banner. Both the limited and the standard banners both take a different currency, but you basically use one currency in order to get both of those currencies. It takes at least 90 pulls to get to the guaranteed five star. However, there is a 50-50 chance to get the five star on rate up in the limited banner. If you lose the 50-50 to a standard banner character, you do get the guaranteed on the next 90 pulls. Now, as for Genshin's weapon banner, their weapon banner used to be very, 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 very bad. When Hu Tao was first released in Genshin Impact, a lot of people were struggling to get her weapon because the weapon banner didn't really had like a pity system. They implemented a change to the weapon banner to fuck players less, but even then it wasn't really that good. Eventually in Genshin 5.1, I believe they basically revamped the weapon banner. You basically get to the weapon guaranteed at the 80th pull. Now, when you pull on these banners, you do get currency for pulling on these banners. I think it's called the star glitter. There is a star glitter shop where you can buy different things. Star Glitter Shop isn't really that good. You can get more premium currency to roll on the gacha from this shop, but some other gacha games typically have like five-star weapons and such in these shops, but Genshin does not. Wuthering Waves does have a better gacha shop. You can basically get dupes of the five-star limited character. Wuthering Waves does have a pretty similar gacha system to Genshin Impact, but instead of getting the guaranteed character at the 90th pull, you get the guaranteed character 
at the 80th poll with the 50-50 included. Wuthering Waves has their weapon banner basically guaranteed right off the bat. They didn't really have to make any changes in their weapon banner. Basically get the weapon guaranteed. However, their four star weapons in Wuthering Waves are pretty copium at best. Gacha Shop in Wuthering Waves is way better than Genshin's though. You get copies of the five star limited character in that shop. Wuthering Waves is also more generous when it comes to getting pulls for their gacha, but they kind of had to be generous because the launch of the game was pretty abysmal. Kind of glad that Kuro Games did simplify their gacha system in Wuthering Waves and PGR. There's like nine different banners. Anyways, if you want a better chance at collecting five-star characters, I do think Wuthering Waves is a better option since they do give a bit more freebies. Let's talk about the gear system in Genshin Impact and Wuthering Waves. Both of their gear systems are relatively similar to one another. You have gear that basically boosts specific elemental damage, you have a main stat, and you also have substats that go along with it as well. Each piece of gear will have a specific set bonus that they have. Genshin Impact's gear system is called Artifacts. You basically farm these in domains. You can also collect a few of them in the overworld just for some like extra artifact XP. Since Genshin Impact has been out longer, it is gonna have a lot more of artifacts for you to farm. It took Genshin Impact five years though to have an item that basically lets you select a main stat in a few substats. However, obtaining such item is very difficult to obtain. Wuthering Waves does have a similar gear system. Their gear system is called the Echoes. They are basically like bootleg Pokemons that you can attach to your characters. Unlike Genshin Impact's artifact system, the Echo system, you can have like a main Echo that you can equip and use in battle. Specific main Echoes will have like a different effect in combat. Some of them can provide a shield, some of them provide healing, and some of them will just attack the enemy. What's interesting about Wuthering Waves' is farming mechanism for the Echoes is that you can basically indefinitely farm these Echoes. Genshin Impact, you have to do domains and spend resin in order to get artifacts and get XP for artifacts. But in Wuthering Waves, you technically can farm for Echoes for a long fucking time. Either way, they both work pretty similar to one another. For main DPS characters, you basically have to have like a crit rate crit damage build. For like other support characters, you basically just slap on, you know, whatever they scale with. Let's go over both Genshin Impacts and Wuthering Waves end game. Both of them have an end game mode that basically has you stuck in a circular room, stuck with enemies with bloated HP, and you basically gotta beat them before the timer runs out. Genshin's version is called the Abyss, while Wuthering Waves' version is called the Tower of Adversity. In my opinion, both of them stink like Diddy's bedroom. Giving enemies more HP isn't really that fun. Both of these end game modes do require multiple teams and Wuthering Waves you need at least three teams although you can at least run like two characters on one side and two characters on the other. What's interesting about the tower adversity in Wuthering Waves is that you can at least swap between weapons with your characters if you want. In Genshin Impact you can't really swap between weapons between both of your teams. I don't know if Kuro Games had that intentional but it would be too late to just take that back because it is a pretty convenient feature. Both Genshin Impact and Wuthering Waves also has a roguelike mode. Genshin's roguelike mode is called the Imaginary Theater. The Imaginary Theater at first was kind of bad. It got slightly better because of the boss and you also have more rooms to travel through. However, in order to really participate the Imaginary Theater, you do need at least 22 characters. So it is a very well much a true end game mode. Now the roguelike mode itself, you're basically just navigating through the menu most of the time, but you are going to be participating in battles. You can select buffs and you basically get a randomize of 22 characters that you selected. So the team comps that you'll participate in this roguelike mode are going to be a bit of a wibble wobble. Some of the team comps will just not make sense whatsoever, but I do think that kind of makes it somewhat interesting. My only real gripe with this game mode is that it only lasts one month and once you're done with it you're basically done with it for the rest of the month so you're basically waiting next month to participate in it again. I think the Imaginary Theater should have just been more of a weekly thing instead. Wuthering Waves' roguelike mode is called the Depths of the Elusive Realm. This roguelike mode is not available all the time but I am reading leaks apparently in Wuthering Waves 1.4, this game mode will be a weekly thing, which I do think is pretty good. But in the recording of this video, the roguelike mode kind of just happens every now and then. I don't really think there's like a specific pattern. The Depths of Elusive Realm doesn't really require any team building. You select one character to go through these 
corridors in the open space to fight monsters you select buffs you select a specific echo to accompany you a very fun game mode i like these game modes better than their you know abyss hp bloated bullshit hopefully if the leaks really are true this could be a weekly thing but as of right now you basically do it every once in a while you're not going to be seeing any gameplay of me doing it because it's not available at this time Southern waves also has another end game mode that genshin does not have and that end game mode is called the holograms this is basically just you fighting a super boss with a time limit this could be very fun very boring or very molding very fun because these bosses do have a different move set to their overworld and tower adversity counterparts so you're not really just fighting the same thing that you're fighting in the overworld or tower adversity the new move sets that these super bosses have can bring a challenge to the run itself also be very boring because i feel like you fight these bosses way too fucking often not just in the overworld or in the tower adversity but even in the combat events as well and it could be pretty molding because you know these are pretty challenging so if you do want challenging gameplay i do think blue and waves can provide that for you so my final thoughts is if you want a more family friendly casual open world game with really good puzzles to solve i think engine impact could fit that but if you're looking for an open world game with combat in the main focus i think wooden ways will be a better match for you that's it that's the end of the video if you like the video leave a like subscribe leave a comment and i'll see you guys later bye bye now come again soon